Comrades, the Socialist Equality Party has entered the 2016 presidential elections to provide workers and young people with a socialist and internationalist alternative to the two parties of war, social inequality, and oppression. My running mate, Niles Nemeth, and I have placed at the center of our campaign the fight to raise the political consciousness of the working class, to oppose all forms of national chauvinism, racism, and anti-immigrant baiting, and to unify workers in the United States and around the world to oppose imperialism and the danger of world war. The presidential election in the United States has revealed the enormous crisis of American capitalism and its entire political system. The one issue that dominates over these elections and the one issue least discussed is the war drive of the American ruling class. Regardless of who wins the election, the next government will put into motion well-advanced plans for expanded military operations, which include a direct confrontation with Russia and China that carries with it the threat of a nuclear holocaust. After one of the most convulsive elections in decades, where popular opposition erupted against both party establishments, the American people are being left with two likely candidates that are both warmongers. Whatever their tactical differences, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are both strategically committed to American imperialism's reckless drive for world domination. Clinton's hands are, all, are already covered in blood. Under her husband Bill Clinton's administration, she supported the horrific sanctions against Iraq, which were responsible for the deaths of at least a half million children, as well as the bombing of Yugoslavia. As New York Senator, she supported the criminal invasion of Iraq. And as Obama's Secretary of State, she oversaw the preparations for the fascist-backed coup in Ukraine and directed the bloody regime change operations in Libya and Syria. As the New York Times recently noted, Clinton has the closest ties to the military intelligence apparatus, particularly the Pentagon brass. The, news, the newspaper wrote, and I quote, for all their bluster about bombing the Islamic State into oblivion, neither Donald Trump nor Senator Cruz of Texas have demonstrated anywhere near the appetite for military engagement abroad that Clinton has. The Times concluded approvingly, she is the, quote, last true hawk left in the race. The billionaire Trump, however, is not to be outdone expressing the unvarnished violence and decadence of the American ruling class, he combines the demand for the unlimited use of military power, CIA torture and assassinations, with the promotion of American first nationalism. His reactionary call for the building of a wall on the border with Mexico and his fa fascistic agitation against Muslim and Hispanic Im immigrants is aimed at silencing all opposition to war and America's financial oligarchy. Trump said last week, and I quote, our military dominance must be unquestioned, and I mean unquestioned by anybody and everybody, end quote. The aim of this dominance, he said, is to make America great again. This makes it clear that the unrestrained use of American military power is at the most fundal, fundamental level a desperate attempt to restore American dominance after decades of economic decline, growing trade and balance of payment deficits, and the descent into the worst forms of financial parasitism and criminality which Trump personally embodies. The U.S. elections have revealed the immense and growing opposition of workers and youth in the United States to the war crimes committed with equal savagery by both parties overseas and the decades-long class war which has been waged against the jobs and living standards and democratic rights of workers on the supposed home front. Eight years after the 2008 crash, the economic and social misery felt by tens of millions of people in the United States lies in 
sharp contrast to Obama's pronouncement of a supposed economic recovery. Depression-like conditions prevail in whole swaths of the country, hit by the global collapse of the coal, oil, and steel industries. In February and March, factories eliminated 50,000 jobs, wiping out all the gains in manufacturing jobs recorded last year. The fall in the official unemployment rate is chiefly due to the record number of workers who have given up searching for jobs. In fact, all of the net gains in employment since the so-called recovery began have been as independent contractors, temporary and part-time work. The Obama administration has overseen the greatest transfer of wealth in U.S. history. The top 20 billionaires in the United States have as much wealth as the bottom 150 million Americans. And the rich not only enjoy untold wealth and privilege, they also live longer. The life expectancy gap between the richest and poorest Americans averages almost 15 years for men and 10 years for women. These conditions have had a profound impact on social consciousness, particularly among younger people who have grown up seeing nothing but unending war, growing indebtedness, and economic secure insecurity. A new Harvard University survey of young adults aged 18 to 29 found that 51% of those surveyed did not support capitalism, compared to 42% who did. One third of these young adults affirmatively supported socialism, and near majorities agreed that health care, food, and shelter were basic human rights. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who pitched himself as an opponent of the billionaire class, has been the initial beneficiary of this political radicalization. The scale of his support blows up the official narrative of American politics, according to which no one claiming to be a socialist can get a hearing. However, Sanders is no socialist. For all of his talk about political revolution, he studiously avoided any discussion of military policy and in the last days declared his support for drone warfare and Obama's infamous kill list. Hostile to the fight for the international unity of the working class, Sanders promotes economic nationalism and the lie that job losses in the U.S. are due to Chinese and Mexican workers. His support for U.S. imperialism is highlighted above all by his promotion of the Democratic Party and his oft-repeated pledge to support Hillary Clinton if she wins the nomination. The only reason a demagogue like Trump can get a hearing at all and could potentially win the elections is because of the reactionary character of the Democratic Party and the official left in the United States, which is pro-war and thoroughly hostile to the economic and social grievances of working people. The political radicalization of workers and youth in the U.S. and the desire, the deep desire for peace, equality, and democratic rights will go far beyond the warmed over liberalism of Sanders and the confines of the Democratic Party. Despite the best efforts of the trade union bureaucracy to suppress the class struggle, there are signs of the, re the reemergence of open class conflict in the United States. From the rebellion of auto workers against the contract betrayal of the United Auto Workers last fall, to the protests of teachers and students against the destruction of public education, and the current strike by 39,000 workers against the telecom giant Verizon. The aim of the Socialist Equality Party election campaign is to broaden this political opposition and to make it clear to workers and youth that the fight against capitalism and to defend their social and democratic rights is only possible if it is linked up with the fight against imperialism and war. Workers in the United States and our brothers and sisters around the world have no interest in slaughtering each other to see which gang of banks and transnational corporations dominate the world economy. Instead, workers in the U.S. and around the world have a common interest in an international fight against the capitalist system. As the International Committee of the Fourth International wrote in its statement, socialism in the fight against war, and I quote, 
The new anti-war movement must, above all, be international, mobilizing the vast power of the working class in a unified global struggle against imperialism. The permanent war of the bourgeoisie must be answered with the perspective of permanent revolution by the working class, the strategic goal of which is the abolition of the nation-state system and the establishment of a world socialist federation. This will make possible the rational planned development of global resources and on this basis, the eradication of poverty and the raising of human culture to new heights." End quote. The reemergence of the class struggle in the United States and the growth of anti-capitalist sentiment are of critical international importance. The American ruling class may be determined to control the world, but it will soon find out it is not the master of its own house. For all of its arrogance and hubris, the American ruling class is the most frightened in the world. Their spokesmen warn that it is only a matter of time before the, quote, pitchforks come out. In our discussions on the Verizon picket lines, workers liken the class divide in the United States to France before Marie Antoinette lost her head. They say that if things continue as they are, workers will have no choice but to make a revolution. These sentiments are part of an international process of political radicalization and the, the growth of the class struggle from France and China to India and the Gulf sheikdoms. The most essential question, however, is the building of the International Committee of the Fourth International, the World Party of Socialist Revolution, to, to provide leadership to the coming struggles of the international working class. In the spirit of May Day, the Socialist Equality Party in the United States pledges to use this election campaign to politically educate the working class, oppose all forms of national chauvinism and bigotry, and to build a powerful international movement against war, social inequality, and exploitation. We call on all of our listeners today to support this campaign. Thank you.